Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Moses Kodane Institute webinar series. Today, we're discussing higher education and research innovation uh, in the post-COVID-19 era. Uh, I'm Vincent Zulu, Manager Maritime uh, at the Moses Kodane Institute. And today's uh, guest uh, is Francesco Perciane, a professor who was born in 1961 in Italy. He studied physics at the University of Freiburg and received his PhD in 1988. And in 2004, he was appointed professor of theoretical physics at the University of KwaZulu Natal. And in 2005, he was awarded an innovation grant to set up a center for quantum technology, uh, quantum information processing and communication. And at present, he's the interim director of the National Institute of Theoretical and Computational Science. Pro Vice Chancellor Big Data and Informatics at UKZN, and an adjunct professor in the School of Electrical Engineering of the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, we are so glad to have you today. Please take over. Thank you. Thank you very much for the for the very kind uh, introduction. It's really a, a pleasure to be. Uh, to be here today, so thank you very much to the Moses Cortana Institute for the for the invitation. <clears throat> um, I hope you can see the slides now. <clears throat> I, I I would like to start with a with a little uh, disclaimer. Yeah, <clears throat> Mr. Zuma was kind to um, uh, list um, what what I'm doing and the institutions I'm associated with. But uh, what I'm sharing with you today are just my personal thoughts. Yeah? So I'm not uh, speaking on behalf of, of, of any uh, institution. We are, <clears throat> you see, the title <clears throat> is a little bit mis misleading uh, of my presentation because I, I said um, higher education, research, and innovation in the post COVID era. But if you look at the current statistics uh, of, uh, of, of, of COVID in South Africa, we are bang in the middle of the COVID uh, COVID era. Yeah, so you see, we, <clears throat> we are uh, we are get, we are slowly approaching the 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 the, the hundred thousand um, <clears throat> level of of, of infect, infected uh, infected people with the with the with the virus, and um, every day there are a couple of thousand more that that we add unfortunately to the list. Yeah, and if you look at it. Uh, in a, in what physicists call a phase-based plot, plot, which is a plot in which you just plot on the x-axis the, 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 the total number of cases, on the y-axis the, the, the daily cases, and this way you, you sort of manage to eliminate the time from, from the plot. Yeah? <clears throat> and then you see that um, in this logarithmic depiction, um, there is not really an indication that um, that we are close to an end of the of the of, of the of the pandemic. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me uh, share with you briefly because I know we have very strict uh, time constraints. <clears throat> what I will uh, what I will try to share with you this morning. Uh, I want to address <clears throat> three 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 questions. Yeah. <clears throat> One, uh, what we can learn from history. <clears throat> the second, how will university react? To the to the crisis in which we are at the moment, <clears throat> and which will be with us for a little while, and will research and innovation uh, save us? Yeah, in one sense or or or, or another. Let's start with what can we learn from history? Yeah, <clears throat> the, the the pandemic that we <clears throat> are experiencing these days was not the first one. Is is not the first one? Yeah, and <clears throat> and. Uh, you know, and towards the end of the Middle Ages, yeah, in around the year 300, uh, 1350, uh, pestilence uh, was um, the plague was uh, widespread in uh, <clears throat> in Europe, and and caused. Uh, you know, we didn't have uh, big data at that time, so the estimates are that it was around between 100 and 200 million <clears throat> million deaths. Yeah, and <clears throat> that time. The plague came from uh, Eurasia, yeah, and it was some of my predecessors. I, I grew up uh, in, uh, in in Genova, in northern Italy, and at that time, people in Genova were famous sailors, and they brought the, the plague from their trips to the to the Black Sea 
and Crimea and so on and so forth back to to to, to Europe and it spread it all over all over the place. Yeah, and you see in the picture from a, a painting which was done a, a while later that the, the 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 general picture of of Europe at the time was not a, was not a pretty picture. Yeah, <clears throat> so. What <clears throat> what is interesting, however, is that after this uh, this uh, this devastating uh, pandemic, uh, something uh, emerged, yeah, in, uh, in 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 Florence. And I apologize, I speak a little bit of my of the country where I'm coming from, <clears throat> but it affects everybody. And that was the phenomenon of the Renaissance, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> which brought again uh, a lot of uh, of light in the in the dark era of 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 the. <clears throat> Of the plague, yeah? and you know the, the 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 historians and philosophers have many theories why the the Renaissance uh, came about. But you know, at the end of the day, it was just a, a rich banker who turned politician and uh, started promoting <coughs> culture and arts in a in a city <coughs> that uh, that some of you might have might have might have visited. Yeah, and the Renaissance was a very active period, a very productive. Uh, mainly because it gave us something <clears throat> that uh, uh, that um, one could generically categorize as, as as humanism. Yeah, so all of a sudden, uh, human beings were were at the center of of of, uh, of the attention to stress their their their, their, their potential and uh, <clears throat> and to try to achieve a, a better life for everybody. Yeah, and during this time, you know, you, the arts were flourishing. You probably all seen. Uh, the famous paintings of, of Leonardo da Vinci and of many other painters um, and, and, and sculptors. <clears throat> science started to become uh, like we do it today, becoming modern science. And I just picked up uh, Galileo Galilei, who was one of the first uh, physicists who <clears throat> suffered personally because he was promoting the, the world picture that the Earth is no longer at the center of the universe, but uh, the sun is at the center of our planetary system. And we, we are just living on one of the several planets that orbit around the sun. Yeah, and the, and the church of the time was not very happy about these new theories. Yeah, <clears throat> but the time gave us also Big, uh, uh, big explorators, yeah, um, people like uh, Christopher, Colum Christopher, Christopher Columbus uh, started uh, navigating the oceans and discovered <clears throat> and found uh, continents that uh, if you were living in Europe at the time, you knew nothing about. Of course, if you were living in America, you've always been there. Yeah? <clears throat> so it was a time of, of big, uh, of big uh, activities and in a certain ten sense, uh, lots of uh, achievements on a, on, a, on a philosophical, artistical, scientific, and, uh, and even geographical. Yeah. So, but what does this, uh, this little uh, excursion on, on, on the plague and the Renaissance has to do with universities? Yeah? I <clears throat> googled around a little bit and, and I discovered a very interesting uh, fact because <clears throat> You know, uh, the UK uh, was also affected by the plague, and millions of people died died there as well. Yeah, and for instance, Cambridge, yeah, which everybody knows, is one of the top universities in in, in the world, <clears throat> lost almost a third of of its population during uh, during that time. Yeah, but one of the uh, unintended consequences of the plague was that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Cambridge has this famous college model, a little bit like uh, like uh, like UKZN, and um, <clears throat> many of these colleges were founded after the plague or towards the end of the plague. Yeah, mainly to counteract the fact that too many uh, lawyers, priests, and uh, other skilled practitioners died during the plague. So there was a desperate need to train. Uh, new people with uh, with skills to, to to let the economy growing. Yeah, and for instance, Trinity Hall, Corpus Christi, two of the famous colleges, were <clears throat> were founded towards the end of the <clears throat> of the plague, just to to kickstart essentially again the the the, the economy. Yeah, so this was uh, 700 years ago. What? How are universities uh, re reacting now? Yeah, <clears throat> just a, a few days ago, uh, three days ago, yeah, 
um, in the news, <coughs> I read that um, Harvard, yeah, which is one also one of the top universities yeah, <coughs> and one of the richest universities in the world because it has an endowment of forty billion dollars or so, yeah is forced to to essentially to 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 retrench staff yeah mainly because covid induced <clears throat> they have a, a shortfall of of many many hundreds of millions of uh, of dollars yeah so they <clears throat> uh, they need to to take uh, severe measures to, uh, <clears throat> to 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 counterbalance the, the financial losses of 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 the crisis yeah but so what, uh, <clears throat> and since the, the, the talk is of the Moses Kotan Institute and we are in KwaZulu Natal, what should university in KwaZulu Natal do? Should they also uh, aim at shrinking to recover or should they uh, follow the, <clears throat> the Cambridge plague strategy of, of, of growing? Yeah? Let me do a, you know, a, a bold uh, comparison yeah? and let's uh, fly quickly to, to California yeah? where there is <clears throat> a famous university called the University of California. Yeah? And one of the uh, amazing things of, 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 of this university is that, that it has 10, 10 campuses. Yeah? For instance, you can say 10 has five. Yeah? They, have, they, have <clears throat> they have 10. And, uh, you know, they have several hundred thousand students <clears throat> and uh, you, you, if you browse and they, 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 they produce many Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize winners and, and they do a substantial contribution to the, to the universe, to the, to the economy of, uh, of California. Yeah? Let us, uh, just for fun, yeah, uh, I made a, a quick comparison yeah, between California and, 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 and KwaZulu-Natal. Yeah? California has around 40 million uh, inhabitants, but we have around 11, so it's a factor of four. Yeah? Area-wise, California has 400,000 square kilometers, we have 100,000, also a factor of four. Let us keep for a second the, the GDP, which is a little bit uh, depressing if you do the comparison. Number of students, <clears throat> uh, there are two major universities in, in California, University of California, <clears throat> In California State University, yeah? and together they have 600,000 students. Yeah? If we add UKZN and uh, University of Zululand, we, we, we are more or less at 50,000. Yeah? So it's, we have a, uh, comparing the population, we have a 13 times less <coughs> students than, 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 than California. In total, they have 33 campuses, we have around six. Yeah? <coughs> so that's a factor of five. Yeah? So that if we take this factor of four in population and area seriously. And if we would like to have just factor four less students than, than California, we should have 150,000 students in, in our universities. Yeah? And <clears throat> if we want to have a factor of four less campuses, we should have eight campuses. Yeah? This is just, you know, just a very rough estimate, dump sack uh, comparison. Yeah? So, but roughly it means that uh, <clears throat> if, if we want to be a fair compare uh, ratio of students to population, as for instance California, we need three times more students than we have than we have at the moment. Yeah. So, how many campuses do we need? I, I mentioned before we need a few more. Yeah. And uh, if we look at uh, how California did it, we need uh, to 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 cover uh, KwaZulu Natal in uh, <clears throat> in uh, in campuses, in particular in the areas where. That, that are rural and have no uh, no campuses at the moment. Yeah? And if you look at the, the, the map on the, on, on the right hand side, yeah, this was an exercise done <clears throat> when, when the lockdown started to understand where the students of UKZ10 uh, reside, yeah? because we had to send them all back, back home. And, uh, and you see that they're all spread across the whole of, of, of KwaZulu-Natal. Many of them live in, uh, in, 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 uh, in rural areas where it might make sense to, 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 to set up uh, campuses. And I will explain just now in, 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 in which sense I, I, I mean it. So how do we do it? <laughs> we do it by, uh, by looking what, uh, what other uh, academic endeavors are, are flourishing at the um, at the moment, yeah. And one of them is the, the is the phenomenon of, of the massively open online courses, yeah. 
And uh, these are the online universities that offer courses online. Yeah, and um, a recent statistic shows that they, they address more than 100 million students. <clears throat> they can offer, uh, they offer already around 50 degrees and thousands of courses and, 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 and other credentials. Yeah, and over the years, since um, over the last 10 years, essentially, yeah, 10 years ago, it was just uh, an exotic phenomenon. You see that the number of courses offered by this university increased exponentially, yeah, almost like uh, like COVID cases. Yeah? <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the numbers a little bit uh, in more detail, you see that the, the, the five big players, yeah, uh, cover almost 100 million, uh, 100 million students and offer thousands of courses and, and, and many dozens uh, degrees and, and, and credentials for, for pro professional, uh, for professional uh, development. Yeah? <clears throat> and the, 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 you, you might have heard about Coursera, edX, uh, Udacity. Uh, Swayam is the, the Indian counterpart, which is already uh, very, very, very big. Yeah? And this is just a slide that you can find on the on the Coursera website. The, the idea is really that they that they uh, follow is to <clears throat> engage uh, deeply between between the, 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 the learners, the, the education, and the and the employers, yeah, and start offering uh, what really is uh, is interesting, yeah, <clears throat> and, and 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 useful for the for for, for the economy and and the skills that are needed to. Uh, to uh, to prosper, yeah. So, uh, you know, just um, sorry, maybe before I address the last question, the 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 the, 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 the basic idea that I think is coming is that uh, uh, university, because of the large investments of of, of government in supporting the the the, the pandemic, not in supporting the pandemic, in fighting <laughs> the pandemic, yeah, and supporting people affected by the pandemic. A university will will be forced to are forced to look at, at ways to 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 save to save money. Yeah? And one of the ways is of course uh, online education, yeah? which we are doing at the moment. Yeah? But you know now it is a kind of more of emergency online education and we need to do it in a more professional way in future. And this is the way in which we can uh, easily and probably at relatively low cost set up uh, more campuses in the in the province. Yeah, by by just uh, streaming the lectures or allowing the students to watch the lectures online and, and setting up uh, centers in which we can give the, the, the support in, in terms of, uh, of tutorials, assistance uh, and, 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 and other, <clears throat> and other, and other uh, avenues. Yeah. So the last uh, <clears throat> point, uh, yeah, sorry, because I'm, uh, I'm conscious of the time constraint, is will research and innovation uh, save us? Yeah? The, uh, the question is, um, uh, is, is to find the, 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 the right equilibrium between uh, probably two, uh, two principles that, uh, that fight each other all the time. Yeah? And one is the, the, the so-called precautionary uh, principle that uh, you know some governments uh, like very much because they think that uh, before something new is is allowed to to to, <clears throat> to 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 develop, one needs to make sure that uh, there is absolutely no no harm involved to to <clears throat> to anyone or to any existing existing systems and <clears throat> and. Uh, um, and procedures. Yeah, the second principle is permissionless innovation. Yeah, just uh, allow people to innovate uh, whatever they want without uh, without asking questions. Yeah, and there are two very interesting books that I advertise here, but I have absolutely no 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 nothing uh, no relationship uh, with the authors that. Uh, uh, that um, that discuss this this two these two principles yeah and um, in particular the, the book by Martin Rees uh, is, is very interesting because he describes in, in great detail the, 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 the what he calls the hidden cost of saying no to innovation yeah preventing innovation can hide very very uh, very very <coughs> inherent um, costs in terms of economy but also in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, of, um, of of lives, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> you know, an example of uh, of a permission permissionless innovation 
was essentially the, 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 the invention of the, of the World Wide Web. Yeah? And um, Tim Berners-Lee, <coughs> who, who, who invented the lab, the, 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 the web, just a few days ago uh, at some UN event, this is just a copy and paste from a, from a news item on a website, <coughs> yeah? um, stressed again that it is this digital divide that uh, needs to be the, the, the bridged as soon as possible because he calls it a, a gross uh, inequality yeah and <clears throat> and that's what we need to 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 uh, to achieve with whatever we want to do this is probably one of the crucial things that we need to achieve in this time and <clears throat> time and age yeah and you know we, we, we you've heard probably all a million times that we are in the middle of um, uh, sorry of uh, sorry uh, of ah sorry I'm ah I'm moving the slides too quickly of 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 an industrial revolution we are in the in the fourth one what you don't maybe don't know that is that we are also in the middle in the in the, in, in the physical sciences of a, of a second uh, quantum revolution that will play a crucial role in, in the conversion of, of, of uh, cyber physical system that we are all expecting from the fourth industrial revolution. Yeah? And what, what is happening in, 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 uh, in science at the moment, and now I speak just a little bit about uh, what I'll do, is that over the last um, century or so, um, two of the biggest innovations uh, of the last century, yeah? uh, information science and, and quantum mechanics, are growing together into a new discipline yeah, that some people call quantum information science, and that is giving us <clears throat> the, the, the basic ingredients of the next generation internet, yeah, which would be uh, a quantum based internet. Yeah? And the three pillars are quantum computers, which will give us uh, very efficient uh, <clears throat> uh, and fast computational power, uh, quantum communication, which will give us probably the only uh, provable, physically secure uh, transportation of, uh, of, of, of data and quantum uh, metrology, yeah, which will give us the, 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 the tools to perform the, the, the very precise measure measurements that we will need to run <coughs> the future economy. Yeah? And it, just 10 years ago, you know, you probably saw it in the news yesterday or the day before, the, 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 the FIFA World Cup started in, in, in South Africa. And at that time, we, 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 we were able uh, to, 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 um, to show for the first time at a global event uh, to give up a, a demonstration of this future uh, quantum communications technology. Yeah? And at that time we were uh, quite famous. Yeah? Um, interestingly, many, many countries uh, at the moment are, are investing huge amount of money in, 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 this, in this technology. Yeah, the most uh, recent announcement, which was uh, last week or 10 days ago, was by, by Germany, yeah, that on top of the many billions <coughs> of funding that the European Union is putting into this development, is putting its own money to, to, to innovate and, and, and promote <coughs> quantum technology. Yeah? And um, I've just cut and pasted a, a, a sentence out of this, uh, this, this, this report, and the link is down there if you want to, to read it, <clears throat> is that what they want to achieve is to build a new industry, yeah? because uh, based on, <clears throat> on, on, on quantum technologies, yeah? because they're well aware that some old technologies uh, won't give the, 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 the many millions of jobs that, uh, <clears throat> that they have at the moment. Yeah? And, and, and you know, and you, if you look around, you know, all, you all know Silicon Valley started in, in a garage, but now people are promoting things like Quantum Valley. Yeah, and this is an effort in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Canada, in, 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 in Waterloo. Yeah, so my question to you is, why don't we have a quantum coast in, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, in Durban? Yeah, it's something that we definitely uh, could do and that we could definitely kickstart locally an, uh, an industry that is essentially not yet there, yeah, but that will be there and, and, and we need to be to be part of it. Yeah? So let me come <clears throat> slowly to, uh, to, to, a to my conclusions because I see the time is right for that. So are we in the middle now after the, 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 the COVID pandemic of a new uh, renaissance? Yeah? <clears throat> I think probably yes, because you know, the, the, the events that we <clears throat> saw recently in, in, in the US with the Black Lives Matter <clears throat> movement 
are indication that you know there is a, a huge uh, movement bottom up to change uh, the, the, the social networks in, 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 in which we live in, 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 the, in, in the positive in the positivist way. Yeah? And, and I think it's very important because it fits with what I said before when I was speaking about permissionless uh, uh, innovation and things like that. Those movements are, are usually bottom up and they and not top down. Yeah, and this uh, <clears throat> Black Lives Matter is, is 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 really an example of a bottom up, uh, humanistic inspired uh, movement that that will change a lot in the positive the world in which we live. Yeah. All the new technologically advanced technological advances that we see, they will probably give us new geniuses. Yeah, and you know. <clears throat> The African Institute for Mathematical Sciences is promoting the uh, the next the, the next Einstein mu movement for 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 Africa, and uh, <clears throat> I'm 100% sure that um, we will contribute definitely uh, new geniuses uh, coming from uh, from KZN and from the African uh, continent. Yeah, and also in in the. <clears throat> In the uh, in the last, if you remember the, the analogy with the, with a similar slide that I have for the Renaissance, we will again have big explorers, yeah. And you all know about uh, Elon Musk and his uh, spaceships, yeah. So we will probably all experience um, people flying to Mars within the next uh, I don't know 10, 20 years, <clears throat> yeah. And and that will definitely uh, induce also a complete change in in, in the mindset of. Uh, of uh, of um, of people and and probably even a complete change in in how our economy works, how our network works, and, and and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I'm at the end of my <clears throat> uh, and I think I spoke a few minutes longer than I should. So sorry for that. But thank you very much for 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 your attention, and I'm very happy to to take some questions now. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. That was quite insightful. And uh, we've got some good questions coming through. Uh, one of which that we can uh, start with uh, uh, is from Anonymous. What are the innovation challenges uh, higher education will experience uh, during COVID? And then the last one, because of time constraints, would be to gauge how far is South Africa in terms of innovation in the uh, higher education and innovation space compared to the rest of Africa as well as globally. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, uh, you know, uh, um, in, 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 uh, South, South Africa is, is doing pretty well <laughs> in, uh, in innovation. Yeah, we are, we, are, we are quite creative. Yeah, w what we uh, what we probably uh, lack uh, is a little bit of, um, of, of, of maybe of, of coordination and, 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 and funding. Yeah. Uh, what I mean is, and I speak again a little bit out of personal experiences. Yeah. Uh, we need, uh, you know, in order to make successful innovation, like, like for instance, Silicon Valley. Yeah. You need an ecosystem in which uh, different uh, partners uh, play together. To lead to uh, to the final uh, success. Yeah. So you need you need to start from from the schools, uh, the, the, the the higher education institutions, the the incubators, the the the, the, the venture capitalists or state agencies that provide the funding, and then the the, the 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 people that guide the startups in becoming successful companies. Yeah. So there are many building building blocks. Yeah. At at, at different. Uh, at different levels, <clears throat> and and one needs to get the 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 the, the mix right. Yeah, if if one of the building blocks doesn't work, the whole chain uh, sort of collapses, or at least makes it more 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 more, more, more difficult. Yeah, and these are not easy things to do. But um, I think we 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 need to <clears throat> uh, we need to 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 try to achieve it. Yeah, and if I can go back. To, to 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 that uh, to the permissionless uh, innovation yeah what we need uh, and again this is just my opinion yeah we need to give uh, young people yeah the more freedom to to do uh, trial and error yeah uh, essentially to apply the scientific method <laughs> to the uh, 
uh, to their innovation. Yeah, if if you don't try new things, yeah, uh, you will never find new things. Yeah, uh, but if you try new things, you do mistakes. Yeah, but if you do mistakes, it doesn't mean that you are a complete failure. Yeah, you just tried new things, and sometimes they work, and sometimes they don't. Yeah, and 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 I think this is the 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 the, the attitude that we need to. <clears throat> Uh, to uh, to promote, you know, we need to uh, allow, in particular, young people, yeah, to 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 uh, to express uh, their creativity uh, without <clears throat> the fear of uh, of being outcasts, yeah, if for some reason they fail, yeah. Uh, failing is part of being creative. Yeah, you, you sometimes you succeed and sometimes you don't. But you know, if you don't try anything, you will never succeed at anything. Yeah. So uh, it's a delicate uh, balance that um, that needs to be to be to be found. I think. I hope that more or less addresses your question. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank, uh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, the message is: you fail your way to success and we collaborate in the ecosystem so that it, uh, it, we are able to, uh, to innovate as a country. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank everybody. I would like to thank Prof and everybody who have uh, logged in into this session and we invite you to the next one at same time, same place. And uh, we thank you all, have a great day and we will be able to answer the questions of site and on the offline. And it will also be available in our social platforms. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Shop, shop. Thank you very much for having me.